journey of going over, going through this new pilot. Um, I mean, there's been some small challenges, but I would say overall, it's been a pretty smooth transition into it. You know, I I was a little nervous at the beginning to get a whole new type of model that we were using, but really, it's been beneficial. I feel because it's made us discuss and reflect even more than we had before and it really forces you to make everything very student centered and you really focus on the, da the data and how that shows you your growth and so I think it's been really great. I really like the change. I believe that now we can uh, communicate more about how I teach and what I'm teaching and stuff where before it was more check it off and you're done. You know so that I like. I would say the biggest difference between this new model and the older model is that a lot of our conversations were based on what the students were doing. In the past, the conversations really started off with what did you think went well? How did you think that you could improve? Or what's something that I can help you with? Or resources that we need to help you grow professionally? These conversations really turned to a different direction and made me think it's completely about what the students are doing, which is a direct reflection of myself. So in that aspect, that is going to be, I think, one of the biggest, I don't want to say challenges, but it was definitely an eye-opening experience to come in and talk about an observation that was in my room where maybe I didn't meet all the needs of the students and it was a clear reflection in what had happened on paper. But I use that as a tool to move forward and say this was actually better than last year's model because just having this conversation I was able to think more globally for what I can do for the whole students rather than what I need to do to make my evaluation look good like last year's model. The biggest change from the old model to the new model is that meeting a lower score say as a two or a three doesn't necessarily mean unsatisfactory. It means that's where my baseline score is, that's where I have to grow. Just like we teach the kids, this is our starting point and we have to grow to develop to a three or a four. It follows the standards based grading very closely and so that's easy for me as a teacher to be like, oh, same things I have my kids do, now I'm being evaluated the same way. So it's just that shift of mindset that we really have to change to the new model, which I really enjoy. I think the biggest difference is the language between the two. It's a lot more positive and a lot, a lot more growth based. Um, before, if you were uh, in the kind of second section, it wasn't that great, or the first section wasn't that great either. And now it's more beginning and developing, and it's um, it's a lot better of uh, the language. It's more understandable, and it's not a bad thing to be in the first section or the second section. It's actually kind of a good thing because you have somewhere to work on and somewhere to grow from, as opposed to before. It was just if you were in those sections, you just felt defeated and that there was nothing that you could do. Uh, so I really like this model better for the growth aspect of it. So initially starting out, defining our baseline score, that was new territory for us and I know we had a couple conversations about it. Absolutely. We're like, where do I start? You know, in fact I wanted to give myself a lower score than I think you wanted to give. So and I think we kinda had a happy medium, meet in the middle. I mean a lot of the times teachers are harder on themselves, so for me it was just like I wanna make sure that I really make this a big focus. So if I give myself a lower score I can really see that growth and that maybe it may be different for people, you know, some people have a different mindset about that. I know that it was just really hard for me to kind of determine where we started this. But I think talking to Dr. Kimsey and really evaluating where I was and looking at artifacts and things that I was actually doing in my classroom, we kind of decided on a baseline score together. And that really helped guide where we were going because we started off with artifacts and evidence. So that really was, okay, what's missing? What can we actually put in place now? Which is why the evidence part of the evaluation was a really big thing, or excuse me, the professional growth plan. That was a big thing for me because the here is concrete evidence. This is what I need to do to meet the score that I want to see. So that, that was hard, to developing a baseline, it which was. is something that we'll have to work on, but I really think after we got it set, it was a great thing to help me develop and see where I want to go for my end score. Um, well, for this year with the baseline score, it was just kind of the first time she came in and observed. We 
took the baseline from there. Uh, but we've taken what my scores by the end of this year and we're working towards next year. So my PGP for next year is going to be the lowest score that I have for this year because I can see that I really need growth in that area. That's where I should be working. That's where I should be focusing. And so that's what I'm going to do for my PGP. And so I already uh, kind of have that. The way we set the goals for my program was one for the building goal. So we went through the building goals and, and looked for something that was you know, going to be pertinent to my program. And my second one was something new to my program. I wanted to enrich the, the students with more knowledge than what we've ha had in the past and stuff. Um, something that was different to them, different to me, uh, something where I could grow also. One of the ways that I set up my goals were with meeting with Mrs. Harding. We sat down, we looked at my goals from last year and just found a way to make adjustments to move them over to this year using the new PGP format. As the year went on, the great thing about this evaluation tool is that you can adjust throughout the year based on how your year is going. That's one of the aspects of it that I really enjoyed is that as my year changed, I could also tweak my goal, not necessarily overhaul it and change everything, but I could make minor adjustments to benefit me to show growth in my own classroom as well with my students. Peace, she was really bringing in how well the students did and what the progress was with student growth and so that was all aligned with her professional growth plan is just it's all tied together as I'm growing as a teacher these kids are growing as students mm -hmm. and it's it's fantastic. Uh, the other thing that I really enjoyed about it kind of along that journey is when I'm doing the other observations with our older model, with the current model that we have right now, I am so excited when we're going through the summative and I get to tell them, next year we get to talk about growth. We get to talk about um, this is where you started and this is where you ended. It's not just you're proficient in all these areas. You are getting, you are, you know, you started here and look at how far you've, you've come as a teacher and these are the, the areas where you've really grown. And I think it's just, it's such, it's better feedback for everyone involved, for, for students, for teachers, for everyone involved. And, and I just really feel excited and, and I think the teachers are going to really, really, really embrace it and, and be happy with the model. Yeah.